Okay, so I just want to talk about people who get depressed, or I've heard a story about someone who gets depressed at Christmas, and also about past lives and associations from past lives, and why, like, um, you know, this thing, as you start to look in past lives, when you're incarnated, um, you know, this thing of like, when you think of like, uh, I think, I mean, I'm not claiming to be an expert on everything, but I, I think Mozart was a child genius and was able to, to like do a piano at the age of five or something. And then if you do like past life hypnosis regression, suddenly people start speaking Chinese. Uh, there, was a one, there was one guy, um, they, uh, they did past life regression on him and then he could suddenly remember when he was in the Second World War and he could remember the names of his people in the squadron. And they double checked that and they all came out correct. You know, so when he went into mm. the past life, you go, oh, there was John and we were in the second squadron and there was John and this happened to him. And then, you know, he, you get this in the past life recall and then the researchers go and check that out and they find it's all correct. So, and Hawkins was sort of saying, so Hawkins has given quite a lot of information about, because when you get to states of enlightenment, it's like you burn the ego so much. You know, the ego is creating this illusion that this is my separate life in this incarnation. If you rarefy the ego enough, then you can start to get flashbacks of your past lifetimes because you're not so identified with your story. So you start going, oh, that, that's why I remember from this lifetime why this is happening or that. So he talks, you know, some of you will know the blacksmith story with Hawkins. So in a past lifetime, he was a blacksmith. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and in this lifetime, he suddenly wanted to get like an anvil and start like, you know, start bashing things with that, you know. So we all get these, like, we all get this kind of innate, um, I don't know, desires to do things in this lifetime. And we feel a strong pull, maybe to go to a certain church, or maybe to start a spiritual, you know, start to be a blacksmith, even in this lifetime, or we, or I felt like strong pulls to certain cultures. You know, like, uh, you know, it's quite funny. I've had so many sort of Greek and Cypriot people. I've had a phase of German people. Um, so it's like you can feel like, you know, there is certain, we're, we're sort of reincarnating. Um, and there's certain, you know, I often have shared in the group before, sometimes I'll meet a group of people and you'll know there's a karmic thing. We're all getting together. They'll fly in from a couple of countries. We'll have a few interactions. They'll all fly back. And you know there's a karmic or... Like uh, when I went to see um, Muji, uh, and uh, you know, and they would pan around with the camera, and then uh, that, and then I'd find out like ten years later, I'd have friends in a twelve-step group, and it was the same guys that was in that thing, and go, oh, we're still back in a different spiritual context, and we're still meeting each other over and over again mm. in different groups. You know, that's not random. Mm. You know, so. Now you don't also know from your past lives why you get pulled to th why you get pulled for for example to a church or why you have wounds at a certain date as well because you can't see the past life you can't see the past life uh, pulls for you to resolve positive and negative karma so for example let's say uh, you but you can the great thing with Hawkins is he says you can more or less vaguely intuit from this lifetime what probably happened in a past lifetime, and you're probably reasonably accurate. So like, for example, if I get pulled to visit a church, for example, I get this strong, or a particular denomination, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a calling for me to go to a particular church and a particular denomination because of something that happened in a past lifetime. To, and now things can, you know, the, the soul, tracks karma, you know, will track karma in so many different ways. In, in The soul can track dates, spiritual significance. So all of that can be held as a, like a karmic package, which you can resolve in this lifetime. So let's say, um, also some of us probably might, I mean, I'm not saying, we don't want to get too special, but might have been early Christians, <clears throat> or might have even known Christ, may, may, may not, or may have been early Christians. So. You know, and things, you know, and, it, you know, in, in past times, very traumatic things may have occurred at, uh, at uh, times. You know, there was the Crusades, 
there was all kinds of things going on. Um, you know, so um, it's not unusual. It wouldn't be. I wouldn't think it'd be surprising if a trauma happened at Christmas time in a past lifetime, and there's a yearning for the soul in this lifetime to reconnect. Even characters from what happened may also reincarnate so that there can be karmic undoing. <clears throat> if there's something like depression, you know, often depression is, um, I mean, I like what Hawkins said, depression, you know, what, one gets depressed, uh, I love what he's, Hawkins said on his depression video, it's like because you think, you project that the source of love is in something outside of you. And so when you think you lose it, there's no point in living. Like, uh, for example, like if, if you're like, if you're a woman, and you're very beautiful, and you're getting older, and you've no longer got your beauty, you can suddenly get very, very depressed. You know, you've got all the compliments, all the attention. Suddenly, like, no one's complimenting you. And then you can suddenly become, and that was your whole identity. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> you know I, I get so much, you know, my, every, my whole identity in my whole life is that I get compliments everywhere because I'm beautiful. Then, you know, you're 70 years old, and you're no longer getting compliments from everyone, and you get depressed, and you go, well, I don't have a, there's no point in me in living any longer, I feel like I want to die. Well, that's because the ego has projected that beauty, an external, is the source of happiness. So when you lose the thing that you think is the source of happiness, then depression ensues because, well, my whole life was that I'm beautiful and I'm not, so I might as well die. Or, the Hawkins talk shared the story of, um, what was it, like a grandmother losing her, her son in the war. And, uh, and they said, oh, your, your, your grandson, Johnny, is dead. And then she's depressed and she's rocking in a, in a rocking chair. And then they find out, and, you know, so she projected that the whole source of life was she had her, her grandson alive. So when he's dead, you know, then suddenly the whole energy collapses, the neurotransmitters are gone, and, there's, and the, everything just is ready to die. You know, the whole body's ready to die. And it's like, and uh, there's no need... There's no source to live. There's no life to live. And even if they tell you, look, we found it was a mistake. You know, actually, Johnny's alive. We just made a mistake. You know, so they're already half in death mode. It's hard to get them out. So, so, um, when, so these things of depression, you know, and it's been answered, you know, is the thing of like, well, something karmically has to be resolved with the depression. Either you can feel it out and release it, or there can be a program in there. You've got to feel the feelings out and cancel the program. You know, and sometimes there can be karmic setups or, or karmic situations which reenact the thing for you in this lifetime to transcend. You know, you know, they, they can be quite traumatic things in the past. Like, like you know, maybe someone could lose their mother in a past lifetime at Christmas. You know, that can be quite tra traumatic. And then you can want, you know, you still. You know, lifetime after lifetime, we still carry the baggage, even though we can't remember it. So, you know, unconsciously, you can feel, like, devastated at Christmas, you know, and there could be something. And so what happened there was um, something was projected outward, and there was a trauma, and there was the loss, probably, of the, of the source of life at Christmas. I don't know, if... if, if um, I can make up horrible things, you know, your favourite <laughs> your favorite priest was beheaded or something, I don't know. Um, or you lost your mother at Christmas, or whatever it is. So there can be this wound associated with Christmas time. But also, if it's a special, just you know, what comes to me, you just have to like be like Sherlock Holmes. Well, it's a, I, I have a calling to go to a church at Christmas and find my thing, and I also feel a deep depression. So the karma would seem to indicate that there was something with my local in my local community, even all those people, there might be a pull in this lifetime to visit a spiritual group where all those characters may be there uh, from your past life for you to un undo, undo. You know, like, uh, karmic undoing can be, you can, one can have positive karma from a past lifetime and negative karma, which one can undo. So there are different ways to undo it. So, but if there's depression, um, you know, it could, it could mean, um, it can be deeper things, like it could be like you could forgive someone. Maybe someone who did something to you could be forgiven, then you could find the grace of God within. Or maybe, um, so you just sort of see, but, you know, um, 
you can also do it the simplistic way. If there's depression at Christmas, you can just feel it out and not put a story onto it and just keep feeling it out. And that way you don't have to find out what the karma is. But generally, if you're being pulled somewhere, um, you can, you can uh, pray to the Holy Spirit for a miracle and that it be revealed to you the meaning of why uh, you have depression at Christmas and it will come to you intuitively. Um, otherwise, uh, feel it out. You know, everything in the world has significance because of tracking certain things from the world, but actually there is nothing in the world <clears throat> that you need to track. You, so that might sound very, very cold, but all the, all the traumas are just like belief systems and repressed feelings. So, um, but sometimes the universe wants you to meet characters from the past and join groups and undo the karma, um, undo the karma. But I would always say my own view is I prefer to undo karma when I've got the option through prayer and feeling the feelings. But sometimes the universe won't let you get away with that and they'll stick you into groups so you can undo the karma you know, the good that's been done to you will be done back to you, or the bad that you've done unto others will be done back to you. And, and that's the karmic payoff. You've done the karmic clearing. You know, you, you, stole, you stole the whole communion bread <laughs> at the local church, and they didn't have any sort of little bread things to give out. So, you know, this time it's like you undo that, you know. You're, you're the pastor, and someone's taken all the little... I shouldn't say that, should I? It's Christmas. <coughs> anyway, it's in, in the spirit of a joke. But um, okay, so. Um